I'm the co-founder of an AI software company called Bump Ups, and let me show you a hidden cost that happens as you grow as a software company. Welcome back, y'all. In this video, I'm going to be going over a hidden cost that basically you wouldn't even know about until you reach the point of growing as a software company. I always do videos like this as I want to give you real world perspective of everything I'm going through when building out this software company to help you and your journey when trying to achieve the same thing. Now, here's a hidden cost that became apparent to us as we got employees for the company. I made another video talking about as you scale as a company, you need to go from a mono repo. When I say mono repo, I'm referring to all the code, the front end, the back end, everything is just in one repository. This way of structuring your architecture comparative to a poly repo. I'm gonna leave a video in the description down below and a card right there that shows you why as you scale as a software company, you'll need to go from a mono repo to a poly repo and kind of explain more of what that even means. But the purpose of this video shows you one of the drawbacks of becoming a poly repo in development. And just for context, a poly repo, rather than having all the code in one repository, then we are fragmenting it so we have the UI in one repo, maybe the purchase backend logic in one repo and kind of proceed in that manner. Regardless, there are implications when you take all your code and split it up in order to effectively scale as a software company. So one of the hidden costs that became apparent to us, which is how we're going to have to approach front end coding logic from here on out. So when you're a mono repo, in order to get going, it's very simple, right? We have one code directory. Therefore, all we really need to do for a front end developer is simply get us in localhost 3000 and run our emulator for our backend, e.g. Firebase emulator start. Therefore, for us to make changes in local and our little pseudo Firebase emulator backend 4000, it's instantaneous. Right away, you make a change in the code, it changes in local. We already know the situation here when doing coding, e.g. home.js, it instantly changes into the localhost 3000 port. That's simple, that's easy. And what's great about that is in a mono repo, you basically have access to all the backend functions so that you can logically go from start zero to start all the way done very fast in development. Therefore, when developing in a mono repo, you have access to everything the unauth version of the website. When you sign in, the auth version of the website where the user can just kind of jump through, upload, everything like this, and accessibility to different functions within the website, such as creating a workspace, generating shortcuts, generating prompt outputs. When doing a mono repo, this is easy. This is done. When doing a poly repo though, this is where it gets a little bit more complex. So then that leads the question of, okay, that sounds great, Corbin. I get it. Mono's cool. What is this hidden cost when it comes to poly? The hidden cost when it comes to poly is that now when approaching front-end development, there are going to be three levels of access. So the first level here is going to be level one. Level one is a developer that only has access to the repository that has all the front-end code. So we'll just say like the UI repository. What this means at level one is this individual will only be able to edit the code in unauthenticated pages, e.g. the user has not logged in yet. So they can edit code here, that's fine. They go to pricing, that's fine. Anything that's just on like the landing page and all the different web pages, they can edit, which works in many different use cases. Level one access is very much similar to the old mono repo way of developing where NPM start, localhost 3000, get instantaneous changes because you are completely in on off. So that's level one though. So what's level two? Level two, we need to include another repo here that gives us the ability to even log in. That's the big thing to understand here. The reason I can't log in as level one is because I only have access to the front end code. Therefore, when I do back end logic, it's just gonna break. You need to actually launch the Firebase emulator or whatever your version of a pseudo emulator is. Therefore, level two would be UI plus some type of infrastructure. So we'll assume that maybe there's gonna be an auth repo where its entire purpose is just a code for authentication. So at level two here then, we're good to go. Still instantaneous changes, so nothing really changes there. So we can log in, sign in, and everything looks good, right? So we can now make changes here in the UI, such as this little box right here. If I go to the links page, I can make changes here. I open the pop-up, I can make changes there. That's all good. So then you might be asking Corbin, okay, but that's the same as mono repo though. Still instantaneous changes, still localhost 2000. So where does this hidden cost incur? The hidden cost then occurs at stage three. Stage three, the developer only needs access to the UI. And this is because authentication isn't relevant anymore because they don't need to even log in to the localhost 3000. 
is because when they perform tasks like creating a workspace, uploading a video, getting shortcuts, when they are developing in this user interface, the workflow then switches to pushing to QA. And before I jump a little further here, let me explain QA. So we got localhost 3000, so we'll put L, then we got QA, and then we got prod. L for local is what we've always known. That's just local in your computer, that's just running code, no internet required, et cetera. In development, before we take code that we change in local and just go straight to prod, and prod is production, which is the live website, bumpups.com, prod, we push our changes to QA, which is a staging environment that allows us to make sure that the code we're working with actually works. If it works in QA, then we push to prod. This is like our insurance. This is making sure that we're not pushing broken code to production. So therefore the workflow when doing this in a poly repo is very much that the UI front end developer will still make changes in the UI repo, but when they want to see their changes reflected in the front end, they need to actually go to QA rather than localhost 3000. And this delay right here is what causes development processes to go slower because of the fact that when you have to push to QA rather than an instantaneous change, like Instead of bump shortcuts, we put bump short. That would instantly change on the local host 3000. But now because we have to push a QA, we're looking at a delay of seven to 12 seconds, which may not sound like a lot, but over time, that seven to 12 seconds is gonna add up. And essentially, this is just one of the pitfalls of doing a poly repo. And as I described in that video in the description down below, you might be like, Corbin, if this is a pitfall and it causes development times to actually take slower, why are we doing poly repos? Watch that video, TLDR, security, scalability, employees. Therefore, level one developer is going to be in the UI, unauth, localhost 3000, we all good, this is L environment. And then level three developer is going to be basically the same thing, UI, but QA environment to see their live reflection. Before I end this video, let me make this crystal clear of why this happens. It's because of the fact that for the level three developer, that needs to do the bump shortcuts changes or the prompt outputs or the shortcut output UI changes. In order for them to do this, it would have required them to have access to basically six, seven, a good amount of the repos associated with the project. But one really big thing here when it comes to QA development is a lot of situations with your local machine and its ability to run on ports, right? So we have localhost 4000, which is our Firebase emulator port. And then every single thing past that, you're associating, for example, your functions 5001, functions 5005. You can't simultaneously run two different code repos on the same port when it comes to functions. Therefore, there is a conflict there. Essentially, this is a long way of me saying when you do a poly repo, it basically is near impossible to effectively render everything you'd want to render in a local environment when you separate the code bases. So the drawback there is basically the deployment time and development time associated with a level three developer is going to take longer than it would have if it was a mono repo. Because in a mono repo, if I made a change to bump short, it would have been instantly changed because everything is under one roof. But now I have to separately push to a poly repo for my specific code. I realize this might be a little confusing. Let me just leave you with one sentence. Mono repo, faster development, poly repo, slower development. So I'll see you in the next video. Mono, poly, hidden cost, two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.